right, next we are going to move on to the natural base E. And what you're looking at right now is a picture of a chart where we're using, we're, we're getting close to E. We are approximating the value of E. E is an irrational number, and it is found by taking 1 plus 1 over N and raising that to the N power. And as N gets larger and larger, it approaches the value of E. And if you remember, E is an irrational number. An irrational number is a number that does not end, terminate, or repeat. We use E as the base for our natural logarithms, which we'll get into in the next couple of lessons. And we also use it for compound interest, or continuing uh, compounding and interest rate. Now, if we take our value of E, which you can see down here as we get, we're, we're at um, 1 billion here, down here at the bottom, that it's 2.7182, so on and so forth. You can see as we come down our chart here, it kind of starts slowing down once it gets to 2.718, all right? It's always going to continue to get a little bit bigger, but it will never go over the value of E. And so if we were to graph 1 plus 1 over N raised to the N power, this would be the graph of it. And then the value of E would be the asymptote. So we have, this is the, the value, and notice that it does not, um, N cannot be 0 because we have 1 over N up here. All right? So, and that's going to be your asymptote, approximately 2.718, okay? So y equals e there. That would be the equation for the asymptote. All right, let's uh, do some calculations here to make sure that you can use your calculator properly. So if I wanted to calculate e to the second power, if I have a scientific calculator, my keystrokes might look something like this, 2, and then press your e raised to the x, and then your equal sign. If you have a graphing calculator, you would probably do uh, press e to the x, and you have to use the second function key to get to that, and then a 2, and then enter. And when you do this, you should get your um, 2.7 whatever raised to the second power. If you notice, e is between 2 and 3. It's approximately 2.7 something. Okay, so it's, it's between 2 and 3. And uh, y equals e to the x is going to lie between y equals 2 to the x power and y equals 3 to the x power. If you take a look at this um, graph, the green is y to the second power. The blue is y to the third power. And notice because the base is a number that is larger than 2, that it's going to be a steeper graph. And the purple is what is in between y equals e to the x, and you notice it is closer to um, 3 <clears throat> raised to the x power than it is <coughs> excuse me, 2 to the x power. Closer to 3 to the x power. Okay, let's talk about gray wolves. Gray wolves um, live in the United States, in the northern regions of the United States, and in the 1960s, they were all but extinct they had uh, about 800 left. And so they were put on the endangered species list sometime after that. But there's uh, populations of them in the northern Rocky Mountains and also in the western Great Lakes region. And when they put them on the endangered list, they had to calculate how, if they were left alone with nothing other than their own, you know, whoever their enemies are out in the wild, which are, aren't too many of them, um, how long would it take them to reproduce? And they came up with this exponential equation. Uh, f of x is 1.26 times e raised to the 0.247x power. And in the North Rocky, this, this was the uh, formula for the North Rocky Mountains. And x represents x years after 1978. So 1979, x would be 1. 1980, x would be 2. So let's see what would happen. Could we project, could, could they have projected the population uh, of the gray wolf 
in the northern Great uh, Rocky. I'm sorry, the nor northern Rocky Mountains in 2010. Well, 2010 is 32 years after 1978, so we plug in 32 for X. And when you calculate it, it comes up to rounded 3,412. And we round it to a whole number because we don't want a half a wolf laying out there somewhere. Um, when you do this equation, be careful with this, that you, if you're going to multiply that, that you put it into parentheses because you don't want to raise e to the 0.247 power and then multiply the results by 32. So test that on your calculator to make sure you're able to do that. Okay, so go ahead and do your checkpoint number six, and there's the baby, so I'll see you in class.